Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. I do apologise for the for the need for everyone to eat lunch, but if we don't, they get all grumpy and they just refuse everything. So it's best to do that. Okay, we're going to go to item 10E and item 10F, 3PL 2021-1528 in full application form, and 3PL 2021-1690, again, in, in full application form. Both at Old Buckingham, and the speakers I have is uh, Andrew Bingham, who's the Vice Chairman of New Buckingham Parish Council, Naomi Bailey, who's the Chairwoman of the Old Buckingham, oh no, she's got a, par she's got a letter to be written out now. Uh, Charles Stimson, who's an objector. I've got Jasmine Ayton, who's the agent, Oliver Jones, who's the agent, and a letter to be written out on behalf of Councillor Stephen Askew. So those names called, if you'd like to come sit on the right-hand side, please. Thank you very much. And um, I'll hand over to Matthew for this one, please. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Chairman. I'm just gonna share the um, slides. All right, um, can everyone see that all okay? Brilliant. Okay, so good afternoon, councillors. So, um, I'm going to be doing one presentation for two planning applications. So the references are <clears throat> 3PL 2021-1528-F and 3PL 2021-1690-F. So um, both are situated in the parish of Old Buckingham. And it's, um, okay, I really do apologise, that's the wrong address. It's actually Cuffer Lane. I do apologise just for that typo there. Um, so... Um, so as they are two separate applications, there will be two separate votes at the end for each planning application. So um, the 1528 application relates to the erection of a new agricultural building. And then the application for, one nine, for 1690 relates to the change of use of land from agricultural land to mixed use of agricultural and leisure and domestic use. This is retrospective. And then the erection of fencing, entrance gate, bell tent, outdoor kitchen, chicken food store, beehives, chicken feed, um, chicken coop, earth band, and alterations to the um, existing pond. And again, this is all retrospective development. So the um, agricultural building is proposed and the um, rest of the development is all retrospective. So it has already taken place. Okay, so here is the site here. So um, the line in blue represents um, ownership for the um, applicant um, for the site. And then the um, site here in red is where the proposed agricultural building, it will be erected. Um, and all of this land here will be for mixed use, um, agricultural and domestic and leisure use. So just to give it some context, so here's the site again, um, the part in red is where the agricultural building will be. And you've got the line here in blue. And then we've also got the site in a wider context to New Buckingham. So I would just like to confirm with the next slide. So, um, so the part here in red shows um, the parish of New Buckingham. You've got a part here in blue which represents old um, Buckingham Parish. So this map is actually taken from the adopted um, New Buckingham neighbourhood plan. So. Um, so neighbourhood plans have to be given weight as part of the local development framework. However, I would just like to confirm that unfortunately no weight can be given to the neighbourhood plan. The reason for this is because the site is situated outside the defined neighbourhood plan area. So New Buckingham neighbourhood plan has the parish of New Buckingham and they also took part of the um, took part of um, an agreed part of Old Buckingham Parish, which includes Buckingham Castle here. But as the site is actually situated outside of this neighbourhood plan area, it means no waiting can be attached to any neighbourhood plan policy. Okay, so here are the proposed elevations for the um, application 1528. So here is, the, here is an existing access, and this is where the proposed um, agricultural building will be. Oh, and then here are the elevations for the proposed agricultural building. So just to confirm, the agricultural building will be um, 
it will be 20 meters by 10 meters and an overall height of 5.5 meters. So here is the um, site plan for um, 1690 application. So this is just to highlight what development has already taken place on site. So um, just to start, so there's been changes to the access gate here. Um, there's been alteration, there's been um, an earth bun that's been created here. As you come into the site, there is fencing, picket fencing along here. And as you come into this part, so um, the, this was the pond that has been extended and altered. Um, we've got a bell tent that is situated here. We've got um, an outdoor kitchen that is situated here. The chicken feed store is situated here. But we've got a chicken coop that is situated here. And we've got beehives that are situated here. And also to confirm that um, fencing is being erected along the boundary of the site as well. Okay, and here are the proposed elevations um, for the various um, pieces of development that have already under that have already taken place. And here is the proposed sections um, for the earth bund. Um, I'd just like to just go back a couple of slides um, and just to confirm. So this is what the pond was in its existence day. And as you can see, this is how the pond has been extended as a result. Okay, so here are just some pictures on site. Um, so this is sort of looking towards the pond. As you can see, you've got the chicken coop here. Um, and this is a further shot. So all of this land here is proposed um, for a change of use from agricultural to uh, mixed use, agricultural ledger and slash domestic use. Um, got the chicken coop here. So this is the outdoor kitchen. Um, this is sort of looking so you can see the picket fencing, you got alterations to the pond here. So this is part that has been extended. This is the bell tent. And then this sort of looking at it. So this is sort of an enclosed off area. Um, and there's also the chicken feed store um, towards here. These are the beehives. And then this is the, so this is the entrance gate. This is some of the fencing. Um, as confirmed, there is fencing being erected around the boundary of the site as well. And this is the uh, bund here. So I would like to confirm that both applications are being recommended for refusal. So the reasons for recommendation for refusal for the 1528 application is because it's considered the proposed agricultural building has no justification and it's considered to be out keeping with the area. It's considered as intrusion into the open countryside and the proposed scale, height and mass is considered unacceptable. And then regarding the 1690 application, I can confirm again, the application is being recommended for refusal. Um, the use, so the domestic slash leisure use is considered unacceptable for the location, is considered unacceptable in an open countryside location itself. Um, and there are concerns that if the entire site was given the permission for that mixed use that the amount of development that has already undertaken place which has caused considerable concern with the local community could therefore sprawl further into the site which is considered as unacceptable i can confirm that the application um ecology raised no objection to the proposed agricultural building and they were satisfied with the um, ecology measures that were proposed for the agricultural building. However, they have confirmed that they have a holding objection to the pond itself. So the pond was considered as having potential for great crested newts, which is protected under European law and alterations to the pond is considered that there has been insufficient ecological information submitted to demonstrate that this has been mitigated as a result of the alterations to the pond. And finally, um, due to the erection of the bell tent on site, this is considered a form of overnight accommodation, whether it is temporary, it's still overnight accommodation. We've had no details of the foul water, um, drainage of the foul water, so we can't confirm definitively that it drains into the catchment area or not. And finally, no draft unilateral undertaking or 75 pound administration fee has been provided. And so therefore it doesn't secure the necessary mitigation for the GI rounds contribution. Um, thank you. Thank you. I've got Andrew Bingham, who's the vice chairman of New Buckingham Parish Council, sir. 
Okay, if you'd like to switch your microphone. You, oh, sorry, I thought you were admitting that was you. I'm not, Mr. Bingham. Uh, Chairman, one question. You've pointed out these are retrospective applications. So I think it would be helpful if you could also post photographs of what the site would look like before, please. We got those. Yeah, to aerial shot. No one took a picture of an open field because there was no need to. Um, we, we can dig that out. Yeah, OK. If, if Sorry, I had my microphone off. That's a very important distinction to make, that uh, these are retrospective, so showing what it looks like now is... Yeah not the full picture really yeah i i can find them out but I, I i think members have got enough intelligence to realize that it was an open field and and then all of a sudden some of these little things started popping up uh, chicken sheds and extension to a pond etc cetera, etc cetera. and the other application for a building obviously isn't there at all and the bund etc I think i think members are intelligent enough to realize it was an open field i don't mean to contradict you but um, uh, if you wish, the officer can find it. Just delays the process slightly. No, I take your point, but by all means, I don't think members. We know what retrospective is is in its entirety. Um, so, are you Andrew Bingham? Oh, that's you, sir. Sorry. Um, so we've got Andrew Bingham, the vice chairman of the New Buckland Parish Council. You have three minutes, sir. I hope you'll be a little indulgent as it's two applications. I hope you'll be a little indulgent as it's actually two applications. Anyway, I'll start. The PC objects strongly to both applications and asks that both are refused. We're pleased to see that the planning officer is recommending refusal. Members will have seen a large number of letters of objection on the website showing the strong opposition in the village to these applications. Prior to the app applicant's acquisition of the land, this was a rural meadow with a small field access. There were no buildings, just a small pond, and the land generated no traffic movements. The site is separated from the village and is an open countryside with no nearby development. Firstly, on the barn application, we do not accept the need for a barn of the size of the building proposed with the purpose as stated by the applicant of storing equipment for maintaining the land. It's only a single small field. The applicant owns and operates a fencing business. I and many other residents in the village who frequently walk past the site have seen the applicant making frequent journeys to and from the field through the village in his truck with fencing materials and with fencing materials stored on the site. The application for an excessively large building raises a very clear likelihood that it's the applicant's intention to use a building for his business in clear contradiction of the application. On the retrospective application, the failure to submit a change of use of application in advance of making changes and to start using the field shows total disregard for the planning process. Prior to the retrospective application, he constructed the large gated entrance, the pond, extended the pond and the large embankment has been, as has been mentioned. Since the application was submitted and despite not having planning consent, the applicant has continued to add to the changes to the field, adding buildings, a kitchen, a skip for burning waste material uh, within the last few weeks, a substantial fence on the Cuffer Lane boundary that screens any activities on the land. The PC has very real concerns that the applicant will continue to push for further development on the land, ultimately, potentially for some form of residential accommodation. Cuffer Lane is a quiet lane used by many walkers and cyclists. The applicant has already increased traffic movements along traffic Cuffer Lane, to the detriment of these walkers and cyclists. Now, I know Breckland has mentioned, the, the planning officer mentioned the neighbourhood plan, which was recently approved, and advised that this does not apply. I accept strictly this is correct, but the plan does make reference to the impact of development in the wider landscape on the sensitive <coughs> historic setting of the village. I do therefore consider that certain aspects of the plan are relevant to the application. The MP refers to traffic issues, particularly in relation to Church Street in the village, the route from the village to the application site. Church Street does not have capacity for increased traffic, 
both due to the narrowness of the road and the poor visibility at the crossroads and the marketplace. Additionally, policy LH4 in the neighbourhood plan requires that any development should maintain and wherever possible enhance the special quality of the open countryside setting of the village. Development proposals which have an unacceptable impact on the village will not be supported. In my opinion, the application is within the area impacting on the village setting and fails to satisfy the policy, hence the, policy, the application should be opposed. In summary, the PC and a large number of residents ask for both applications to be, few, to be refused. Furthermore, we consider it essential that enforcement action is taken to return the land to its original rural grass meadow condition. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I have got um, a letter from Old Beckham Parish Council, which I'll read out towards the end, or I'll have it read out towards the end. I'll now take Charles Stimson, please, who's an objector. Three minutes, sir. Uh, well, three minutes plus. You're away. Um, I, I've been categorised as an objector, but I really want to point out a few things uh, and invite the applicant to deal with some simple questions. These comments concern both the application for numerous changes of use of the land, as well as the building proposed for erection on it, as it is perhaps unfortunate for the applicant, neither proposal is suitable for this rural meadow, which also has no water or electricity supply. Uh, it seems clear from the works already undertaken and the owner's various statements that he would like to create a secure compound enclosed by high fencing, uh, which has become subject to retrospective applications. The building described as a barn is shown as 20 metres uh, long and 10 metres wide, about 32 feet by 65 feet. It is said to be needed for equipment required for the management of this meadow, but applications before you today seek to change the meadow to a leisure-based uses, contradictory to the farming and the proposed large barn. Mr. Whaley can perhaps help us today with more detail about what could be needed for managing the land that requires a building of that size. The blue dye added to the much enlarged pond may very well leach out to the nearby water courses. And on this point also, I would like to ask Mr. Whaley to take today as an opportunity to tell us more about that dye and why it is necessary. I have nothing against Mr. Whaley personally. He needs a secure site and a large shed, he says. But I think what has happened here is he's unfortunately bought the wrong piece of land, because as set out in the planning officer's reports, this piece of land is wholly unsuitable for the various purposes Mr. Whaley apparently seeks to achieve. Reports submitted by his professional advisors, who I think have let him down badly, failed to correctly reference the land before any of the changes commenced, point I made a few moments ago. I'd like to deal with one other point, which I should cover. I was granted planning consent for a barn in that lane, but the circumstances were very different as they related to a genuine farming need and a truly agricultural land holding, a situation in no way comparable with the meadow we are discussing today. Much has been said about traffic and walkers, but these arguments should not, in my view, be routinely um, advanced by serious serial objectors against development where there is a genuine farming need in a farming county. But for this meadow, the proposed leisure use is another traffic that has regularly been seen, and we saw fencing materials in the photographs shown, which is Mr. Whaley's business, will increase levels of non-farm vehicles that cannot be argued as acceptable rural traffic at this location. Noting the wide public objections and the officer's comments, and the grounds set out at length in those uh, reports, these applications must um, fail. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> I've got um, Jasmine Ayton and um, Oliver Jones uh, as the agents. Are you both wishing to speak? Oh, you'll do the speaking. Okay, thank you. Far away. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, just to correct a couple of points as we have so far. So these applications have been in for a long time. We picked the applications up as planned as well once they've been in for a little while and have the applicant had was had to reply for retrospective because we restarted some of the changes in use on the site. So the applicant wants to make it clear that there's no commercial use to take place on the site. He's not seeking for permission for commercial use to take place on the site and that he has an existing yard who already utilizes his best thought for that for his existing operations. The reason he visits the site every day is because he has chickens on the site. He's had chickens on the site since before the application went in, uh, which he realizes he should have applied for planning for. 
Prior to the application going into site, he used to sell the eggs out the front of the site. Once the application went into planning permission, the eggs stopped being bought by the local people and he felt that that was unnecessary for that, that to happen. Materials that were stored on the site were for fencing and building. He has erected the fence on the site and he has erected the gate on the site. The reasons for that were because once he bought the site, he put some equipment on the site to utilize and that equipment was stolen. He then also had uh, issues once the site was in for plan admission with lots of people accessing the land uh, to take photos of the site as, as it was his land. Uh, <clears throat> the application is for a mixed use. So whilst he has got beehives and chickens on there, he also wants to use it for his own leisure purposes. Now, he realises that you can't just have a leisure use in the middle of the countryside. The leisure use that he was proposing to use was for his daughter to utilise her quad bike on the land and also for him to be able to camp on the land. Originally, he was under the impression that he could camp on the land for 28 days, I think it was originally, and he was then corrected of that. So he, and that was why the bell tent was there. He currently has agricultural equipment such as sprayers and a tractor that he utilizes, but he does not keep them at the site at the moment because of the theft on the previous, uh, previous equipment that he had. The skip that is on the site is for burning chicken waste. He had a visit from the environment agency and has an exemption for that. And they have told him that he's quite within his rights to do that. Uh, the non-toxic uh, algicide in the pond, which has been submitted, um, the details of that have already been submitted to everyone, and it is a non-toxic dye that goes into the pond for algae control. The reasons for the, for the building, as we stated before, were for security, um, and he wishes to erect that building for security purposes. He was happy to take any conditions that should be um, required to make this application um, acceptable. He has no intention to live on the land. He has an existing property that he already has. He just wants to use this as an extension to his garden and use it as a small holding, which he has registered already. He'd also like to take the option to offer a deferral of the application should the committee wish to visit the site and see it um, as it stands to date. I think the site looks very different to what it, what it does sometimes in the photos. And should that be an option, we wish to offer that to you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, now I've got... Um, a letter to be read out, a written statement from <clears throat> Naomi Bailey, the chairwoman of Old Buckland Parish Council. Thank you very much, Chairman. And um, she writes that my apologies for not being able to attend today as usually planned. I would like to highlight Old Buckingham Parish Council's objections to the two applications <coughs> for several key reasons. One, these applications will have a severe effect on New Buckingham with regards to traffic. It is a small village with very narrow single track roads, both in and around the village. It already struggles with parking and domestic vehicles, so an increase in agricultural vehicles will cause severe problems. Second point, New Buckingham recently had its neighbourhood plan approved, and while the site is within the parish of Old Buckingham, it will affect the community of New Buckingham. These applications are not in line with New Buckingham's neighbourhood <coughs> plan, specifically policy LH4, which supports the maintenance of open countryside in and around the village, and policy CE2, which encourages the preservation of land for recreational uses. And as the site lies on the Taz Valley Way, the applications are not in line with this policy either. Third point, a lot of damage has already occurred at the site, as work has been completed without permission. The ecological and environmental impact will only get worse if these applications are approved. Supporting these applications would simply open the gates for other landowners to show little regard to planning laws. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. <clears throat> we then have another written statement from the ward rep, <laughs> Councillor Stephen Askew. Are you prepared to read that? Yeah. Thank you. So Councillor Stephen Askew writes, good morning, members. A bit late. Whilst these applications officially sit on the very edge of Old Buckingham, it is New Buckingham which will bear the brunt of the implications caused by their approval. I am very concerned about these applications on two fronts. Firstly, the way in which they have been submitted retrospectively, following extensive works to the pond, the significant earth bund, other activities alluded to by previous speakers without the necessary permissions, and secondly, the potential and likely long-term harm to this most minor of minor roads, 
and the chaos it will undoubtedly cause in New Buckingham Village. Just a brief history lesson, back in the days of William the Conqueror, New Buckingham was created as a settlement on the outskirts of its neighbour, Old Buckingham. This was what it was designed to be, and while there has been much development and modernisation over the centuries, the parish remains an excellent example of our historical heritage with areas of ancient interest littered throughout. Clearly, the planning portal demonstrates that there is much concern locally over these applications. Non-permitted works already undertaken and what will result if permission is granted. You will have already heard from both Old Buckingham and New Buckingham PC and residents outlining these concerns of which I concur. Members who are familiar with New Buckingham will know that it is a very compact village split by the B1111 with a network of narrow roads sprouting off it, flanked by a mix of ancient and modern housing. Like the whole of Breckland and beyond, New Buckingham has seen a major increase in vehicle numbers per household. <coughs> this has caused particular problems in the parish due to its historical nature, which leads to street parking to the nth degree. Indeed, recently, I met with the highways officer in New Buckingham to discuss this issue as it is causing a major access problem. The highway officer's report hardly gives a glowing recommendation. Access to the application site will only really be off the B Road via Church Street, which can barely facilitate a small car, let alone the type of traffic suggested in this application. The alternative access direction would have to be on Cuffer Lane via Folly Lane to the east and Harlingwood Lane to the west. Again, members who are familiar with this area will know that these are certainly not suitable for heavy traffic and any regular use would cause severe damage to historic hedgerows and an ancient and well-trodden footpath. Members will recall that earlier this year, this council approved the new Buckingham neighborhood plan, a document produced following years of dedicated and hard work by local residents. It's important that this document is recognized and carries weight in the determination of applications relevant to it. A, to give confidence to the parish that they are included in the process and decision-making, and B, to send a message of confidence to other parishes considering a neighbourhood plan. Members, I would urge you to respect and recognise local concerns, the totally unsuitable highway network and the historical jewel in Breckland, which, which New Buckingham undoubtedly is when determining these applications. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you very much. It's open to questions from members. Uh, Councillor Atwell. Uh, two questions, if I can. Could just have some clarity on the highways issue, because you just said that there, what you read out from um, Councillor Askew, you said that there were highway concerns, but I'm reading one report on here that said that there aren't any objections to highways, is that right? Could you clarify that? And then I have a question for the applicant. Okay, so yes, I'm happy to respond. So the highways officer, um, they had to assess it on the um, on the material that was submitted, and they were assessing it on the provision that it was personal use only. So that's why they have raised no objection, because what they're stating is, if it was for no, if it was for personal use only, they would expect there to be. Um, Whilst there would be whilst there would be traffic generated to and from the site, and they were aware of the type of vehicle that would probably go along it, if it was for personal use only, there wouldn't be a significant amount of traffic along the lane that they felt would that would be of detriment to Cuffer Lane, and for that reason, they found it difficult to substantiate a refusal, and they recommended a raft of conditions um, to accommodate the matter. My follow-up question was about the algae treatment in the pond. Um, why is it necessary to put treatment in the pond? Because if that was just an agricultural farm pond, I would expect that to just sit there like stagnant water. Are you proposing to put fish or something in this pond? Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Wilkinson, please. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Just following on from my colleague, Councillor Atterwell. Um, 
like the parish council pointed out, that it, it's a wide, broad thing of, of, of uh, leisure and, and, and agricultural use. Do you know if your client is going to use it as a personal area for himself, or is he intending to have uh, um, tourists? It's solely for personal use, and I think if there was a condition related to that, he'd be happy to accept any condition related to that. He clearly is, he only has an intention to use it for himself, his daughter and his, his family. That's the only people he has up there. Could that be a condition, Matthew? Yeah, we are, yeah, we are able to impose a condition that restricts the land to personal use only, and can also say that there'd be no commercial use, including um, such as like tourism related, um, use as well. How's that, Will? Um, I heard something mentioned about the use of quad bikes. You said something about quad bikes. Um, is that something the use of which could be conditioned to only certain hours? Because um, that can be a bit of a blight if quad bikes are thrashing around there all hours of the day and night. In, in theory, if members are minded to approve it, then yes, we can condition hours for any motorised sport. We could even say that if it's relevant, that, that, that there, there isn't any use for, for that purpose. So yes, you, you can impose conditions if you're minded to approve it. Okay. <clears throat> um, yes, okay. So the quad bikes was literally just because his daughter used the quad bike. So there was no other use for it other than that. It's literally for his own personal a, as a single quad bike. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but obviously, there's then maybe a friend wants to come down and bring their quad bike, and yeah, I, then I, maybe another couple of friends, and we end up with a quad bike race, <laughs> yeah, and then we'll end up with a quad bike competition if yeah. we're not careful. So that's I think where the members are leaning to. Um, yeah, someone else had their hand up. Um, yeah. Councillor Plummer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, could the planning officer? Uh, there's a long list here on um, here what we've got with the change of uh, land. Now, can we go through each one and say whether you need planning permission or not? Like the entrance gate, do you need planning permission? And what I'm saying is we've got it in front of us, but Kenny, you know what I'm coming at, don't you? We've got a list here, which I think is a little bit of a, a blinder. You've put everything you possibly could in, but he's allowed to fence it. Am I right? Without planning permission? An ordinary picket fence or whatever you want to call it. Because keep livestock in, I'm trying to get out, Simon. Sorry, but. Oh, sorry. sorry. You, you can erect fences under permitted development, but if it's in front, if it's alongside a highway, it can't be any more than a meter high. If it's within the field itself, it can be up to two meters high. I think what we're saying here that the, the, the majority of these uses are not for uses associated with the lawful use of the land which is agricultural so there are a lot of domestic uses here that do not tie in with the the, the lawful use of the land so, i mean logically I'm, I'm just trying to look at this at logically if i had a piece of land and i put some chicken coops on it and put a gate at the front of it and i'm not looking to get plan permission for that am i i mean that's logically you know beehives i mean you don't need plan but i mean for putting beehives on something. I know, I'm, I'm just trying to water this down. You've, you've put everything you possibly could, except the kitchen sink. Oh no, sorry, you have got the kitchen sink in here. But what I'm trying to say is, you're making it look a lot worse than it really is. That's what I'm trying to get at. I know what you're saying, but do you see where I'm coming from? We're, we're trying to pad this all out to make it look really, you know, he could have done so much of this without yeah. having the- I, I think, yeah, I know where you're coming yeah. from, but literally what the officers have done have treated this as, a, as an open field, and this is the various things that have been put forward on this open field. I'm not saying whether they're good, bad, or indifferent. These are the items. This is a complete case then. We're not picking and choosing. We're not in a position to say, well, we'll accept that, but not that. I will accept that, but not that. I know where you come from. A couple of beehives stuck up a corner of a field. I don't think anyone would even realize they're there, but they're there, and they accumulate within the other, uh, the operation of the other items on the site. Can I just come back very Please quickly, do. Please. It's always open to the applicant if he feels that some aspects of this are things that he could do without the need for plan permission or not development to submit a formal application to determine whether or not it is. See, that was the more direct reply that 
Yes, Councillor Antoine. Chairman, I was just wondering, because um, it is quite hard to visualise this from the photographs that have been shown so far. So I'm, I'm wondering whether members would benefit from a site visit to look at what's actually there at the moment, at the present <coughs> time, to give us the full picture. Well, that has been put forward. Um, I'm not sure who put that forward. I think the agent, uh, the agent put that forward. Um, and, and, and that just relies on whether, um, whether you can get a seconder and then we'll put it to a vote. Would anyone like to second? It's been proposed by Councillor Atwell that we have a site visit. Would anyone like to second that? Councillor Martin seconds that. Right. So um, for a site visit, um, if you're in agreement of a site visit, could have a show of hands, please, to agree to a site visit. Six and those against one. Okay. Okay, this item is deferred for a site visit. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. That was a long wait to end up with that, but never mind. We're going to come and have a look. <clears throat> We're going to ride quad bikes and um, do a bit of fishing and um, eat some eggs on a camping stove and sit in a bell tent if it rains. Good. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. We're going to go to Spall now, which is uh, application 10G 3PL 2022 1048. And this is a variation. I've got Councillor Calvin McLeod of the Parish Council. If you'd like to come and sit on the right hand side, sir. And uh, Johnny Rankin, who's the agent. Again, if you'd like to come and sit on the right hand side, sir. You're both giving me serious beard, beard envy, but uh, never mind. I have a reason for mine. Uh, Councillor Wilkinson. Yeah, just to let um, the committee be aware, if they're not already aware, this is um, a part of my um, Brecon Ward. This ball is a part of my Brecon Ward. Okay, thanks very much. Councillor Kittle Morris. Just to remind you, Chairman, we were sent some pictures relating to this application. Yes, we were. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so this application, we are in SPORL. Um, it's presented to Planning Committee from Chairman's panel as it's a major application and it proposes to increase the number of dwellings. So this application seeks to vary condition four on the previous outline planning permission, which was given for residential development of this site. On that permission, condition four limited the number of dwellings to a maximum of 35, that outline permission was considered by committee in October 21 and the decision issued following a legal agreement in July 22. So here is the application site sitting alongside existing housing to the north and it's at the southern end of the village and you can see the site includes the Essex farm buildings to the south and it's proposed to demolish those um, as part of the redevelopment. Again, you can see the site is open farmland with the farm buildings and its situation at the south of Spore Village. <clears throat> so you can see here, uh, the vast majority of the site falls within the allocation, which is the purple, for residential development identified in policy SH1 of the local plan. And you'll note that the previous planning permission also extends beyond that allocation site uh, identified with the black line going to the west and the south. And the proposed condition sought again, just to remind you, is the development shall be limited to a maximum of 75 dwellings. So they're proposing to increase from 35 to 75. So this shows indicatively the original outline planning permission um, showed up to 79 dwellings in a layout similar to the one shown here. Um, it shows how the site could be developed for up to 79. Um, it is only indicative and obviously has not, has not been agreed. 
I've just got some photographs of the site. So this is looking at the existing farm buildings with the site to the right hand side. Again, and this is the site and the farm buildings. And you can see the housing to the north just there. We'll just go back to the, to the plan. So the applicant is of the view that the additional dwellings will provide for a more efficient use of the land in line with the MPPF and boost the supply of housing. This is accepted. Uh, the site has an extant planning permission and extends beyond the allocation. The spoil housing allocation policy allocates 2.1 hectares of land for at least 35 dwellings and the extended site area totals 4.9 hectares. So it seems logical, therefore, that this extended site area can accommodate well in excess of 35 dwellings. The proposal for more dwellings is still subject, of course, to compliance with all other policies of the development plan. And this has already been just demonstrated in allowing the outline planning permission. Also, when the previous application was determined, this was on the basis of the indicative layout of up to 79 dwellings. So a development of this scale has been assessed already in technical terms. None of the consultees now object, and it's considered that if all other matters are satisfactory at reserve matter stage, that this development could be accommodated without harm to this part of the village. In terms of the housing targets in policy HOU3, it's acknowledged that if approved, the numbers of dwellings for the settlement will exceed that target. However, this must be significantly exceeded. And given that permission already exists for residential development on this land, and there's a need to make the most efficient use of land, it's considered that there's no demonstrable harm in this case by allowing the target to be exceeded. This view is supported by the fact that the density will remain low at this edge of settlement location being 15 dwellings per hectare, as required by policy HOU6 of the plan. This is a matter of planning judgment when having regard to the development plan as a whole. Regarding the remarks of ecology consultant requiring net gains, it's considered that condition 17 already covers that requirement and this will need to be demonstrated in detail anyway at reserve matter stage. A deed of variation is proposed to the section 106 agreement in order to um, secure an education contribution sought from Norfolk County Council and the existing requirements of the 106 remain in force. So in conclusion, um, despite the increase in numbers with the extant planning permission, it's considered that it's not contrary to policy spoil housing allocation one. Um, it's a matter of planning judgment about the numbers. The additional dwellings will give additional benefits in the form of an additional 18, uh, sorry, it will provide 18.75 affordable dwellings for the village. Um, there's an existing permission within this red site line and that this makes efficient use of the land. And the number is up to, so it's not going to be definitely 75, it's up to 75 and retains a low density. Therefore, it's considered that the proposed amendments would accord with national and local planning policy, including the criteria in the spore policy allocation. There's been no other material changes to policy or planning considerations. Therefore, it's recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Barbara. Um, I've got Councillor Calvin McLeod of the Parish Council. Are you a chairman, vice chairman, or just member? Last time I was here, I was here as vice chairman. Now I'm pleased to say I'm just a councillor. Just a, pleased to say you're just a councillor. You did, didn't want the responsibility. See, he doesn't want the responsibility of being a chairman. Okay, sir, you have uh, three minutes. Could I ask you to go back a couple of slides to showing the one where you're showing the larger site plan? That one. Um, last time I, I was here, I was um, asking you to ignore the planning officer's advice of 36 homes and go stick with the 39 homes in accordance with what the parish council wanted. As you can see, the large development just above the planned development, one when it was built was affordable homes. Our village needs affordable homes. Affordable homes, whether that be low-cost homes, social housing, 
it needs the families. We have a village school, we have a village shop, a village pub, post office. We're very lucky, but we need to maintain those. We don't need out of, how, out of town people who are having their shopping delivered by Tesco's the day before they arrive and they're using it as a holiday destination. We need people who live there. We are a small village and the proposal for 71 homes is a wonderful thing because it means we are going to get those affordable homes. The previous developments, the last two developments in the village, one of them offered two, two affordable homes within the development. They became one house. Uh, another one offered 12 affordable homes within the development. They became two houses. And both developments within the village that offered affordable homes disappeared. When I sat here last time, I was told by the housing officer, different one, that we didn't need affordable homes in the village because they're building them in Swaffham. I don't live in Swaffham. I'm not on Swaffham Town Council. I'm in Spall Pouch Council. And Spall wants affordable homes. So I implore you to approve this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've got uh, Johnny Rankin, who is the agent. Uh, three minutes as well, sir. Good afternoon, members of the planning committee. With thanks to the planning officer for the comprehensive presentation and also to the uh, member of the parish council for speaking. As set out by the officer, the original application, which some of you may be familiar with, uh, assessed the site on the basis of 79 dwellings, inclusive of the relevant reports and surveys, all of which found the development to be sound for that number of dwellings. Uh, this was and still is reflected in the lack of statutory objections to the proposal and the recommendation of approval, subject to conditions which the applicants are agreeable to. Through this variation of condition application, we've continued to work with the council, incorporating comments from the planning officer uh, into an amended layout, demonstrating that 75 dwellings can be cited whilst also reducing the number of proposed flats, courtyard parking, um, and you know, an arrangement, accepting that that will be subject to any upcoming reserve matters application. So as uh, already touched upon, as well as delivering the 79 dwellings, the proposal includes for a mix of housing types, open space, play areas, recreational area, as well as uh, Norfolk Green infrastructure and recreational avoidance and mitigation payments, uh, an education contribution to Spore Primary School, a library contribution per dwelling, uh, and as already pointed out, 25% of the proposed dwellings will be affordable, amounting to that 18.75 figure. So given the demonstrated benefits of the proposal, those lack, the lack of statutory objections and the recommendation, uh, we would respectfully ask that you resolve to approve today. Thank you. Thank you. It's open to questions from members. Uh, Councillor Wilkinson and then Councillor Atterwell. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> yes, obviously, as ward member, um, the officers have kept me um, abreast of what's of all the discussions and uh, the plans has looked at very, very well, bringing it down from 79 to, to 79 to 75 to allow extra parking, which is always, always an issue. Um, I, I can tell you that the housing department here welcomed the news that there could be 25% social housing uh, of that number and um and i yeah so i'm um the only thing i could say was um <clears throat> you are, <clears throat> we're going to see some photographs soon of where obviously it's open to where it joins up to the other original housing estate possibly there could be it's quite easy to have screening in there and i would suggest that the, the developer look at uh, screening between the two two developments thank you Councillor Atterwell. Uh, yeah, just wanted to <coughs> want to ask the parish council: Has Spall had a housing needs survey carried out of the residents in the village? I believe there was one some time ago by the housing officer, but I don't know the details of it. 
my only cautionary tale here is we're, we're getting excited about 25% affordable homes, which is great, but that might not do what you think that's going to do for the people of Spall because no guarantee that Spall residents with the housing policy that we have, we can't link those affordable houses to residents in Spall. That'd be dependent on where they sit on the housing register, but that's a, that's a housing policy, not a planning policy. As long as you're aware of that. You it's can respond. More, sorry, it's more a reference to um, the estate opposite to that side. The average house price there is the 500 to £750,000 price mark, which isn't really an affordable home for anybody. We want, we want to encourage small families, not executives who use it for weekends. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Martin, did I see your hand shoot up or not? I thought I did. And then Councillor Kybert after that. Just a quick point. I, I see on the obligations officer from Norfolk County Council, he just <coughs> seeks contributions for one school place, but on a large development like that, wondered if that was acceptable. Yes, councillor, they have considered that to be acceptable because the reason is there's already some capacity in the primary school. So the development has only got to mitigate the additional burden, as it were, on the primary school. Councillor Kai Bird, please. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, the affordable housing allocation, is has that been subject to a full viability assessment? Because that's normally where the problems come. This is a, an allocated site, so viability would have been part of the, the local plan process. But of course, as as we all know, that uh, some stage down the, down the line, it's always open for, for that to be challenged again. But viability would have been carried out as part of the local plan allocation process. Okay, thank you. Any further questions from members? No. The, oh, Councillor Wilkinson. I'll just mention about the schools, um, Councillor. Um, Chairman, uh, um, in my ward, there's three schools and, um, and two others surrounding Necton and Castleacre. They all bus out, they all transport out. They haven't got one school where all the local children can get in. That is another uh, Norfolk County Council highways, uh, um, not highways, uh, education um, allocation of places. It's, it's a bit of a mix, it's messed up. Just for due course, um, we've uh, got the um, photos uh, that were sent in by Mr Hayter, uh, who's an objector, unfortunately couldn't make it today. So they've sent some photos in. Um, if we can have those, please. Yeah, this was just some photographs. The objector wished to show committee of um, the site from his property. Okay, thank you. Um, obviously, he was just showing that uh, he looks out onto a nice open field and there's going to be some development on there, which was always the case anyway, as it's allocated land. Um, there is, um, you'll notice from those pictures as well, that the, the close board fencing, although raised onto a couple of concrete um, pillars um, going lengthwise, that they are only four foot panels. So I'm not sure how much more that makes a difference to it. Okay, but anyway, we've seen him. I had the gentleman been here, he may have been able to explain more. Okay, um, as long as you're happy with that presentation, I'm going to take the vote on item 10G in SPAL, which is 3PL 2022-1048. Of course, this is a variation. Your officer's recommendation is one of approval. Can I have a show of hands for approval, please? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. This items have been approved. Thank you for your time. Um, item 11 on my sheet is um, applications that have been determined by the Deputy Chief Executive. Um, those are there for your um, information. And item 12 is the appeals, again, there for your information. And with that, I am... No, uh, item 8. Oh, yes, we're going back to item eight. Well done. Well done. Well done. I nearly closed the meeting and then you'd have been completely done. 
Yes, sorry, forgot we were going to put that at the end. Item eight, then. Thank you. And then, and then we'll close. Uh, that's you, is it, Simon? It, it is, Chairman. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm conscious it's been a, a, a long meeting, so I'll try not to keep you too, too long. This is um, a report that sets out the spending and receipt of monies in association with Section 106s, both historical and new. I don't propose to deal with any specific site issues here. If you've got any specific site issues around Section 106, then please contact me or the Section 106 officer um, directly. The, the, the legislation and the planning advice states that from 2019, 2020 onwards, any local authority that receives developer contributions has to, by the end of each year, publish an infrastructure funding statement covering the previous financial year. In this case, that relates to 2021-22. We've been extremely prompt in publishing online every year in time due to the work of the, the, the Section 106 monitoring officer. The report needs to cover the amount of expenditure where funds have been allocated, as well as how that money has been spent, where the information is available. Just in terms of the, the highlights, in that financial year, we received a total of just over £456,000 for various projects. We entered into agreements for 148 affordable housing units and over the year have provided 81 affordable housing units. We have allocated funding to the level of just over £942,000 and transferred just under £600,000 to other bodies and organisations. And we currently hold £2.5 million for distribution and use, Chairman. So the report is for noting. Councillor Atwell, thank you. Just a quick one. Um, thank you for the report, very informative. I'm just wondering whether that'd be possible to, uh, do you, I want to ask, do you keep a running total in any one year of the amount of uh, open space, physical size of open space accumulated across the district and the amount of, uh, how many hectares of sport provision because I think that would be quite a useful thing because I think we we do have targets for that I think some years ago there was a report done to say that um, we were below the sort of national average on some of those areas on open space uh, play provision and sports and recreation just wondered whether we we keep a running total each year I think that'd be quite an interesting statistic I'm not aware that we do as part of the local plan process, we will have to do an open space um, study and assessment to inform the local plan update going forward. Um, it, it is tricky in that a lot of the open space is um, maintained and managed and provided directly by developers. Um, parish and town councils are, are doing less in terms of picking up land for, for various reasons and, and, and the district doesn't take land on. So, my brief answer is that no, I don't think we do, but I will just double check. Yeah, I, I, I think I think I don't think we do because I don't think we get told. Um, but we could. There, there may be a way of finding out, but I can't think off the top of my head. But I will take it away, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Kybird. Oops. Um, in this time of rising interest rates, what happens to the funds we hold? Do, does the council benefit from that or does the uh, depositor? I've got it personally in an offshore account. I promise you're safe. No one's using it. Or do you want the right answer? I'm not 100% sure. Here we go. But I think the council benefits. But I, I, I wouldn't like to be gospel on that. Councillor Atwell is, is correct to me. What I do know is the funds that are collected later index linked um, so that we make sure to take account of, of, um, of, of inflation. But I think Councillor Atwell may, may know more than I do in that respect. Any further questions? No, thank you. Uh, with that, um, I close this meeting, the last meeting of 2022 and wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Thank you.